we're here with Christina Davignon, co-founder and CEO of Ringley Smart Jewelry. So first of all, let's, let's show us the ring. Okay, so I brought a ring with me. And we launched the ring about um, a year and a half ago. It's been on the market for a year and a half. And it is a smart ring that connects to your phone through Bluetooth. Okay. And will notify you of various notifications through vibration and a subtle light on the side of the ring. And so it's a different color depending on if you get a text or an email or... Yep, so these are the notifications I have set up. And you simply tap on the, this vibration setting. You can choose your vibration pattern so you can feel it buzz. Okay, and okay, then, so it's blue. What does that mean? And then if you tap on the color, you can set your color. So now when I get a phone call, it'll vibrate three times and show blue. Show blue, okay. And so you're expanding beyond rings, I understand. You're launching a bracelet line, and you have one on that you can show us? Yeah, we just announced our new collection of bracelets. So we started with rings because it was probably the hardest form factor to do. We're really focused on miniaturization and getting the technology really, really small so it essentially feels invisible to the wearer. And um, now that we have that, we're going to be putting the tech into a lot of different designs and form factors. So bracelets was the natural next step for us. So you can be fashionable and techy at the same time. Yeah, with and nobody needs to know that you're wearing tech, but it provides you that added functionality that you need in this connected world that we live in. Great, and that's been the criticism of a lot of these smart watches is that that you don't want to look like you're wearing something too techy, especially if you're going to a nice event. So, so Ringley definitely yeah. has an appeal to to certain women. Uh, one thing you told me about that was interesting is you're expanding to payments. You're going to be able to pay for things with Ringly. How is that going to work? Yeah, so last October we announced a partnership with MasterCard and so we're now working on payment enabled jewelry that we'll be announcing and launching in 2017 and it works essentially the same way as Apple Pay. So you use your Ringly app to connect any credit card that you want and then you connect that to your jewelry, be it your ring or your bracelet, and then anywhere where you you can now tap to pay at a terminal, you'll be able to tap to pay with your jewelry. And you also do fitness tracking with Ringley, so yeah, it was how does that compare to like a Fitbit? We started out as a notification device, but we got a lot of feedback from customers saying that they now had to wear two devices, the fitness tracker and the Ringley, and so they wanted it all in one. So with our bracelet launch, we decided to put fitness tracking in. But there's no display on these devices, so how do you see your step count? We communicate through vibration and light. So we have vibrations when you achieve a goal. So when you hit your, you know, your step goal for the day, it will let you know. And then in the app is where you can go and monitor and track all of your movement. And you've raised about $7 million in funding? Yeah, we did a um, million dollar seed round, and then we did in December of 2014 a $6 million A. That was a little while ago. Are you yeah. going to raise any more funding? We're thinking about it. I mean, you know, we're always raising. So <laughs> as an entrepreneur, you're always raising money. So yeah. And so how many Ringley items have you sold? We don't reveal the actual number, but we've sold tens of thousands of units. Tens of that's thousands. What, that's what we say publicly. And, and so how much do they cost? I, I'm sure it They're, varies based on the item, but what's what's the range? Yeah, we have a lot of different SKUs right now. So we have eight different styles that you can choose from, and they range from 195 to 260 depending on the style. And where do people buy them? Is it through Ringley.com, or can you buy, do some stores sell them? Yeah, we're available on Ringley.com, but um, we're also on Bloomingdale's and Shop Bob and Neiman Marcus, and we're in MoMA Fancy. stores here in the city. Yeah, so it works. And then this year we'll be expanding to a lot of new stores. And so when you look at smart watches and wearable tech, do you think fashion is, is the most important factor for getting someone to buy something? Or why do you think, what do you think is going to be the future here? Are people going to adopt smartwatches? Well, especially for women. So, you know, for me, I wanted to solve a problem that I had in my own life, and I think a lot of women have this issue, is that we don't keep our phones in our pockets. And so I wanted something to subtly let me know what was going on without having to pull out my phone and always check my phone and always be staring at a screen. So I wanted to get the most relevant information sent to me without it being distracting to what I was doing or who I was with. And I wanted something really subtle. And I think, you know, for women, like there weren't a lot of options out there when it came to wearable tech. A lot of the devices were, they felt a little gadgety. They, they were designed to be unisex. And, you know, when we talk about our clothing, men and women wear different things. 
So I believe that the future of wearables isn't going to be a one-size-fits-all device. We're going to own several devices the same way that we buy clothes today. Do you think you would expand to men's fashion jewelry at all? Or? We get asked that question all the time, especially <laughs> at tech events. <laughs> but yeah, we're always looking to take our existing technology and put it into a lot of different designs and form factors to, to, to suit different needs and styles. You know, originally when I started out, it was I was solving a need for women um, that you know, because a lot of men keep their phones in their pockets, so they didn't they didn't need the notifications as much. But now that we're expanding into payments and and to future technologies, it's definitely um, an area that we're looking into. And we don't see a lot of women entrepreneurs raising funding from top venture firms. Do you feel that you faced any challenges? Was it was it hard to get the likes, the attention of Andreessen Horowitz and the other investors? I say this a lot. I don't I don't think the challenge is because I'm a woman. I think the challenge is more so that our product is focused on women, and so a lot of the VCs um, out there today tend to be men. And you know, you have to do a lot more explaining on the market and what the product is and why people would want to use it. Um, as opposed to pitching to a woman, woman who gets it right away because it would be something that she wants and, and would wear. All right, well, I look forward to seeing what's to come with Ringley. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. Thanks for having me. This is great. And so now we're going to go to Mike Butcher, who's on the floor of Hardware Alley.